Since I know a lot of you watching are huge Call of Duty Zombies fans and with all of the Lovecraftian lore we've seen that started in Shadows of Evil, we've been long since awaiting more weapons like the Apothecan Servant. <laughs> Well, finally, the Apothecan Servant has given birth to a plethora of like-minded twisticle tentacle monstrosities in Forgive Me Father who have kindly sponsored this video. If you are a fan of COD Zombies and HP Lovecraft's work, this game is right up your alleyway. From Cthulhu to the Old Ones and his minions face against the deadliest of them all. And you can learn further insight into where there's been a lot of inspiration in Call of Duty Zombies from Lovecraft lore. Forgive Me Father is a dark retro horror first person shooter set in a comic book style world inspired by the novels of HP Lovecraft. As the only one left with full senses, you begin a journey in search of answers and relief. How long can you last? The game has just exited early access on April 7th for you to enjoy in all its glory and it entered early access last year so the developers have had a lot of time to garner community feedback and how to improve the game ready for its release for you to now check out. The game's been developed by Byte Barrel and published by 1C Entertainment. Like I said, you are the only ones left with full senses and you embark on a journey in search of answers and relief in this FPS game that is created in a distinctive retro horror comic book style and feels as if it came straight out of Lovecraft's books. Be aware of your madness level which dynamically changes during gameplay and gives you additional power. Choose your active skills depending on your playstyle and use them to fight against the eternal evil. Explore this Lovecraft inspired world that is full of hidden and hard to reach areas and uncover the entire story to solve the mystery of this crazy place. Some of the game's highlights include the feeling of a classic FPS from the 90s, time lapse animations, opponents and elements of 2D in a 3D environment, first aid kits and life points, non reloading weapons, power ups during during dynamic combat with numerous opponents, a custom combat experience with a scripture in one hand and weapons powered by an unknown substance in the other, the player will face the challenge of maintaining their humanity. It is up to the player to decide how their equipment evolves and to find ways of defeating hordes of unpredictable opponents. Like I said, you have the dynamic level of madness, directly influencing not only the audio visual experience but the gameplay itself. It's a effect varies depending on the current level of the player's madness and the game's comic book style really is reminiscent of Borderlands. Hand-drawn graphics designed to maintain a distinctive comic book look where any screenshot from the game could be a part of a new comic book. The mood and aura is straight from Lovecraft's dark novels. All throughout the game the player will feel the atmosphere of dread and horror that the works of HP Lovecraft are renowned for. Surrounded by the occult and forces of eternal evil, experience feelings of hopelessness, madness and confusion and the burning need to find answers and bring back some semblance of reason and sanity to the world. There are many climactic levels, a diverse world entirely made by hand, full of interesting enemies ranging from possessed inhabitants to monsters straight out of your worst nightmares. Playing the game you can see the love and passion that the developers have poured into it from the visuals to the gameplay but the visuals for me are probably the biggest drawing factor and as a fan of atmosphere, you will be in love with this game and what it has to offer as it tingles through your bones and every fibre. There are two heroes to choose from, each with their own unique development tree. Experience the story from the perspective of either a priest or a journalist. The way the developers describe the game is that it's stylized Lovecraftian old school FPS set in a comic book style world with a lot of 2D components in a 3D environment. The game does contain gore and violence against style human-like creatures. People are loving this game. Kotaku stated, Forgive Me Father has a great atmosphere, a stunning art style and a ton of unexplored potential. PC Gamer said, The Lovecraft inspired FPS with comic book art makes a strong first impression. Splattercat Gaming said, Amazingly animated Eldritch Apocalypse FPS. And all of the reviews that have been collating since it's been in early access are all overwhelmingly positive. It even won indie game 
Game of the Year in 2021 and was nominated for Best Desktop Game. Now that the game has exited early access, it's time to enjoy the slew of additional content. So you can see the roadmap on screen. Now obviously, it is complete now because we are up to the full release. But within the initial early access release, which was on October 26th, 2021, there was the introduction of the first and second act from levels 1 to 12. The priest character, 6 weapons, 4 skills, 15 enemy types, 2 bosses, a weapon upgrade system and a level up system. Then with the first early access content update, they added levels 13 to 14, 1 new weapon, 1 new weapon upgrade, Christmas decorations since it was around the time of December, a cumulative patch based on community feedback, the second early access content update added levels 15 to 16, 1 new enemy type, a surprise feature and once again a cumulative patch based on community feedback as they would patch things in just sort of touching things up. But now in spring 2022 we are up to the full release and they have added the fourth and fifth act levels 17 to 25 so there is a bunch of content. Of course if you played it in the early access there wouldn't have been as much accessible but now it's in its early access it's fully complete and up to that high quality standard now that they have fine tuned everything and touched up and listened to the community's feedback. So three new bosses and their arenas were added to the journalist character, all story elements, a new game mode, final changes to the user interface and sound effects, there is controller support and full localization. Of course in the future the game will continuously get updated adding more and more and like I said I think this is something that a lot of you who are fans of Call of Duty Zombies will love. Of course we've seen the old ones and Elder Gods in Call of Duty Zombies which are largely inspired by Lovecraftian lore but this game sort of takes a more direct approach to the Lovecraftian lore because Treyarch with Call of Duty Zombies kind of did it with a twist where they took the stuff from Lovecraft but switched it on its head and there's a lot of stuff that's really unique that's only vaguely inspired by Lovecraft's work. I think this game is more direct. You can see the old ones, you can see the Elder Gods and I think it gives you sort of a perspective on maybe even stuff that we could anticipate in the future in Vanguard Zombies and Treyarch's next Call of Duty Zombies game once they delve more into the stuff with the Elder Gods since the old ones are going to be returning in Treyarch's next Call of Duty Zombies game now that Zykov has been captured in the containment chamber and Samantha was sent into the Dark Aether, the old ones are likely going to return as Zykov consume them to take their powers to become the Forsaken. But enough about talking about Call of Duty Zombies, I just think it ties really nicely into this game and it's perfect for showcasing on the channel. If you want to check out this game, there will be a link in this video's description to Steam. And right now, since it has just released, they are currently running a 15% discount until the 14th of April. So you can get it for just £15 in the UK, which is a huge bargain for this masterpiece. Anyways, thank you for watching the video and make sure to subscribe if you are new around here. And there, uh, bye. was supposed to meet your cousin. He asked for your help. However, the room was empty. What's next? Serve me.